Okay, thank you Colin. Um, <clears throat> sorry it was a bit of a rush tonight. That's not like me, I like to be here on time. Um, but I took a wrong turn as you know. Uh, be a spiritual application there wouldn't they? And they sure would. Um, but what I'd like to do this evening, um, I'd like to share a few thoughts upon the blood of Jesus Christ. And um, it's always good for us to remember the precious blood that the Lord Jesus Christ shed. And um, but just before we, uh, we look at the three points that I've got to my short message this tonight, um, I'd like us to think about why we should thank God for the blood of Jesus. And I'd just like us, first of all, before we just look at those three points, just to turn to... Uh, the book of Acts, please, chapter 20, because we have a precious promise here in Acts chapter 20. And it's a wonderful verse, and you know, uh, Colin's just been in his prayer. He said that we can thank God uh, the Father, and we can thank God the Son as well, um, in the scriptures that we're going to have a look at tonight. But in this scripture, in verse 28... We have a precious promise here um, for the church. And um, we read in verse 28. It says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers. And uh, we see here that Paul is um, talking to the, the, uh, the church at Ephesus, to the elders there. And um, he's saying, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. And we see here in this verse a precious truth about the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we see here that the Bible is saying that God himself God has purchased the church with his own blood that's with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ but that verse is basically saying that Jesus Christ is God and God shed his own precious blood for the church that's wonderful um, that's one of the most precious promises and truths that we have in the New Testament um, isn't it unfortunate that most of the uh, modern Bibles today, they throw doubt upon that wonderful truth. Um, and they just change a few words here and there. But a great truth has been absolutely taken away. You know, in, in the footnotes of the NIV, you'll read something like that uh, God purchased the church with... Um, sorry, that God purchased it with the blood of his own son and it's a precious truth that Jesus did shed his precious blood but you don't read that God purchased it with his own blood um, in, in, in the modern Bibles and um, you know I, I believe that's a satanic attack upon the blood of Jesus because it says that God God purchased with his own blood and uh, we have that in our King James Bible tonight and I'm thankful that we have it, it preserved in our in our Bible tonight that's a wonderful truth um, but why should we thank God for the blood of Jesus well I've got three points uh, tonight the first one is because the blood was shed for many let's just turn to Matthew chapter 26 Matthew chapter 26 and um, here we have uh, the Lord Jesus Christ with his disciples um, eating the Passover meal and um, we read if we just look at from verse 26 it says and as they were eating Jesus took bread and blessed it break and break it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it 
to them saying drink ye all of it verse 28 for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins and we have a wonderful truth here and this is one of the reasons why we can thank God for the blood of Jesus because it was shed not for the few not for the ones and the twos but it was shed the Bible says here for many um, I wonder how many people have lived and died since the time of Adam we'd have to say that there's been billions and billions of people who have lived upon this earth billions of people who have been lost in sin the Bible says that all have sinned that doesn't leave anybody out all have sinned and come short of the glory of God that's a lot of people that is a lot of souls um, but did Christ did he only die for the just for did he only die for the elect did he only die um, for the ones and the twos the Bible says he, sh he shed his blood for many but what does that mean is the blood is it limited in any way some would say that the atonement is limited and I believe that that is, a, that is an attack upon the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm just going to share a few scriptures here just to show that Christ's blood is sufficient. The Old Testament but also for the New Testament believers as well as it is for us today. If we just turn to Isaiah chapter uh, 53. Isaiah 53. And we read here a wonderful chapter it's a prophecy that Isaiah is giving about the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah the Jewish Messiah Israel were expecting um, a Messiah to come and Isaiah here speaks about the sufferings of Christ and uh, we read here don't we in verse 6 it says all we like sheep all who well you, you could bring the Jews and Israel into that verse all we is, uh, Isaiah is counting himself in there he's saying all we like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and that's basically saying that we're all sinners that's what Isaiah is basically saying and he's saying and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all remember when John the Baptist came he said behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world and we see here that Isaiah is looking to the future he's looking to one who would lay have um, laid on him the iniquity of us all yes all of the Jews all of Israel all of their sins were to be placed upon the Lord Jesus Christ now let's just turn to the New Testament you just turn to Ephesians chapter 2 and um, you know usually at this time of year we uh, we go and uh, we've been with the last few years with Colin and Jean to um, to listen to the Messiah Handel's Messiah in December it's wonderful and it's all about the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, many of it many of this much of the song has been taken from the scriptures and Isaiah 53 but let's just turn to Ephesians shall we um, we've, we've had a look at Israel we've had a look at the Jews being included in the many let's just um, have a look chapter 2 and uh, if we just read from verse 11 and uh, Paul here is speaking to the church at Ephesus he's speaking to the the Gentiles now and um, he's saying in verse 11 he says wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands that at that time ye were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise 
having no hope and without God in the world. Okay, so this was, this was the situation of the Gentiles. Okay, and he says, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. How wonderful. And he says, For he is our peace, who have made both one, and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, the hatred, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And we see here how the Gentiles were able to uh, partake of that sacrifice by the Jewish Messiah. We know that the disciples took part of that. They believed in Christ as their saviour. But we see here now that the Gentiles were able to take part in that sacrifice and that they were one in, in that body. How wonderful. And you know, if you ever get um, an opportunity to go to, um, to Israel, maybe, it's wonderful that you can have, be one in spirit uh, with Jewish Christians today as a Gentile. And we can be one, you know. And... Um, you know, there, there is no hierarchy that the, that the Jews are any better than the Gentiles or the Gentiles any better than... We're one in Christ. But that's wonderful, you know. And it's the Jewish Messiah. He shed his precious blood. That's the Old Testament and the New Testament here coming together. Gentiles are included in the blood that was shed for many. And I'm glad about that. I don't know about you. But I'm glad that I am included in that shed blood. Um, let's just turn to a, a few more scriptures. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9. And um, the writer to the Hebrews says, But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels. You know, the angels didn't have to... Um, you know, we're not subject to death. But the Lord Jesus Christ put on flesh, God manifest in the flesh. He went to the cross and he says, For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honour, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for how many men? Every man. That's the many. And we see here that every man is included in that sacrifice that Jesus shed his precious blood. It was for every man when he died on the cross. You know, the Bible speaks about Abraham. If you just turn to um, John chapter 8. John 8 and verse 56. And um, G uh, Jesus here is speaking to those, those Jews who were um, refusing Jesus as the, uh, as the promised Messiah, these Pharisees. And Jesus says to them in verse 56, he says, Your father, Abraham, rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Abraham saw something all those years back before Jesus ever came to this earth. But Abraham was able to see something of this promised redeemer who was to come. And um, I believe that Abraham saw Jesus' day. That's what it's saying here. Um, I believe maybe he saw it when um, he took Isaac up to Mount Moriah to have him sacrificed. And uh, didn't um, Abraham say... That the Lord would provide himself a lamb. And I believe that Abraham was looking to the future. To the future lamb of God who would shed his precious blood. And he would be the atonement for the sins of his people. And um, so I believe that, you know, Abraham was before 
any Jew who ever walked upon this earth you know the Jews came from Jacob Israel one of the twelve sons but Abraham was before that but we see here that Abraham was able to rejoice to see Jesus' day and um, Abraham was hope was in that coming redeemer we read about Job even Job had a hope that he would see his redeemer one day and um, it's all looking to the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, his precious blood that he shed for many let's just turn to one last scripture uh, 1st Timothy chapter 4 1st Timothy chapter 4 and uh, verse 9 and uh, Paul says that this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation for therefore we both labour and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Saviour there we see it again the divinity of the Lord Jesus who is the Saviour of all men and then he says especially of those that believe so that would probably say that the elect and also the unelected are counted in the shed blood that has been shed upon the cross those that believe but also the unelected as well Christ has paid the price so that any man can receive forgiveness of sins that's how precious the blood is it's been shed for many you may ask this evening well why aren't all men saved then if Christ has shed his blood for every person well the answer to that would be that he shed his blood uh, he shed blood only benefits those who believe in it and those who trust in it you know we've just read here haven't we in verse 10 he says we trust in the living God who is the saviour and tonight if you've never put your trust in the shed blood of Christ for your sins tonight can be the night the Bible says today is the day of salvation and he paid the precious he, he, he paid the debts that you owe for your sins by shedding his precious blood he did that for you because he loves you and you are one of the many that he died for wonderful so the first reason why we can thank God for the blood of Jesus is that it was shed for many it was shed for you and for me secondly we thank God for the blood of Jesus because it cleanses us from all sin let's just turn to 1 John chapter 1 I think uh, Colin was ahead of me there so I'm taking these pages over uh, 1 John chapter 1 and we read a special truth here in verse 7 John speaking to the Christians and he says but if we walk in the light as he is in the light Jesus we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanseth us from all sin you know so often we read the scriptures and we just fly through them we don't really think of the magnitude that are in some of these verses but in verse 7 he says that the blood of Jesus that was shed cleanses us from all sin can you think of a sin today that maybe you have committed maybe in the past as a non-christian or maybe even as a Christian the Bible says that his blood cleanses us from all sin and I'm glad about that tonight because I know what I'm like but reading the scriptures it gives me hope because I know what the blood of Jesus is like and it's able to cleanse me from all my sins wonderful I wonder tonight maybe there's a sin that you are struggling with and maybe you think that God can't forgive you but the Bible says that his blood can cleanse us from all sins no matter what they are it's sufficient 
it's precious and it's Christ, it's God's blood and it's able to cleanse us from all of our sins will there be a sin in the future that maybe one day we might say Lord how did I do that why did I do that maybe but the good news is is that the Bible says that the blood of Jesus Christ it cleanses us from all sin there's a place where we can take our sins to to have them forgiven is this a license for us to sin God forbid the Bible says shall we continue in sin that the grace of God may abound no God forbid that we God forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein no it's not a license to sin but it's a lifeline for us to have cleansing and for us to have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ that's what we read here in verse 7 he's speaking about fellowship he says but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin there's a place where we can go the Bible says that we need to confess our sins in verse 9 and he says that he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness no matter what it, what it is how bad you may think it is the blood of Jesus Christ has been shed and it can cleanse from all sins wonderful why don't you take whatever it may be tonight and confess it to the Lord Jesus Christ and his promise is, is that he will cleanse you and he cleanse you for fellowship that's what we need isn't it that's what God wants us to have with himself he wants us to have that fellowship with him and it's the blood that enables us to have that fellowship and we need to walk in in the light as he is in the light scriptures make it very clear um, so there's a place and I'm thankful for that as well tonight um, third reason why we need to thank God for the blood of Jesus is because it purges the conscience let's just have a look at Hebrews 9 Hebrews chapter 9 from verse 13 <clears throat> and when I was driving down the motorway this afternoon I was listening to one of Colin's messages about uh, purgatory and about the Catholic Church um, I don't know if you know what the word purge means, but it basically means to clean, to clean something, to clean it out. Um, and that's what the blood of Jesus Christ does. It cleans it, it cleanses us. And um, the pur purgatory in, in the Catholic Church, you know, they believe that, um, that you can't know right now where you're going to spend eternity. But if you want to have your sins forgiven, then you'll need to go uh, spend a bit of time in that place but you'll never know how long it's going to be and uh, you know they will say that you'll have to have prayers said for you um, and it's a place of purging it's a place of having your sins cleansed and taken away but it's only going to happen when the people are praying and when people are putting money um, and saying masses for you it's terrible isn't it you know when you think that Jesus Christ has paid the price for us already and these people are making money it just shows you what kind of church that is it's the church of Satan it's not the church of God or the church of our Lord Jesus Christ tonight let's just have a look in verse uh, 13 chapter 9 of Hebrews and um, obviously Paul here is Paul wrote Hebrews is I believe he did speaking here about the Old Testament sacrifices and um, he says that for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh verse 14 he says how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God then he says purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God and we see here precious truth not only does um, Paul speaking here about the purifying of the flesh with the Old Testament sacrifices but now he's speaking here about 
The blood of Jesus Christ purging your conscience. What does that mean? What's he saying in that verse there about <coughs> purging the conscience? Well, let me just read to you um, Matthew Poole in one of his, his commentary, what he says on this verse. He says that though the sacrifice be over, the virtue and excellent casualty of it doth abide. Purging now as ever, making body, soul and spirit one frame of holiness to God. So as the most quick, lively and sensible part of the immortal soul, conscious of sin, is freed from the guilt, filth and fears of sin that they cleave to it. Thus purged, no consciousness of guilt remains, nor fear of punishment, but it is filled from the interest it have in his blood and the work on it of, his, of this spirit. Full of joy and peace and righteousness by believing. And then he says, souls are quickened, have boldness and confidence, God would, in point of duty. Matthew Paul wrote that. What's he saying? Well, he's basically saying that now that Christ has shed his precious blood and he's taking away the condemnation that we were under, we can serve God with joy and we can serve him with peace and we can serve him with full assurance of salvation because his shed blood has made us free. You know, the Roman Catholic or well, the Muslim can't say that. They, they serve God in fear. We don't need to serve God with fear of condemnation anymore. But we can serve him with joy. Our consciences have been sprinkled. You know, when I serve, when I serve God, I serve him with joy in my heart. Because he's taken away my sins. And I'm not under condemnation anymore, the Bible says. Eight, Romans 8 verse 1. And I can serve him in freedom. That's wonderful. Only the Christian can know that wonderful truth. You know, sometimes the devil will like to remind us of our past. And he'll try to bring fear and doubts. But you know, we need to be reminded that that shed blood has been shed for us and it's been shed so that we may have our consciences purged and we may serve God with joy wonderful and I wonder this, this evening do you sometimes feel maybe useless maybe you feel as though you know the past and all that it's got to be reminded about the blood. And if we do have something that maybe we feel ashamed of, we need to go to Jesus Christ and we need to confess it to him and get it under the blood. Our blood is powerful. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. It's been shed for the many. How wonderful. And it cleanses us from all sin and it purges our consciences and it makes us free to serve Jesus Christ with full assurance and joy in our hearts. That's wonderful. Let's just have a word of prayer and thank God for, for his blood tonight. Dear Lord, we just thank you that we can just be reminded of these wonderful truths. We thank you for the church. We thank you that Jesus Christ, as God, shed his precious blood and he bought the church. He's redeemed us. We thank you for that wonderful truth tonight. We thank you for that blood that has been shed for many. There is not one person. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we thank you that that is past, present and future Lord. And we just give you thanks tonight. That many, the many are included. We thank you tonight as well dear Lord that that's, that precious blood cleanses us from all of our sins we thank you dear Lord that those past sins have been forgiven and we thank you dear Lord that there is a place today where we can go 
where we can confess our sins to Jesus Christ and have them forgiven. And we thank you also, Lord, tonight that that blood has been shed to purge our consciences and to take away the guilt, the filth, the condemnation, and we can serve you in, in joy and full assurance, Lord. We thank you for that tonight, for the blood. Help us never to forget that, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Steve.